of the Empire State Building. C100. In studio, I've got the one and only, uh, my dude, Spencer Sutherland, hanging out in Z100. Let's give her an applause, please. Yo, you're taking over the countdown tonight, man. I'm going to get to know a little bit about what you've been up to. And plus, you got your phone. You got a playlist I'm sure that you rock with, right? Artists that you love. Yeah, for different occasions. Serious. Yeah. How many playlists do you have? Uh, let's see. You got like a yeah. sexy vibes playlist. You got bops. Like, I got like that? a getting ready for the, like to go out playlist. Okay. I got yeah. a, I got a, um, a show playlist. All right. That was two or four shows. I have, um, a feels playlist. Yeah. <laughs> it's got some John Mayer and stuff on it. Okay. Dude, here's yeah, what I want to do for the, the next hour or so. I just want to let you, I don't know, hang. We're going to talk your music. We're going to talk about those songs that influenced you to become a singer songwriter yeah. and just some of the stuff that's on your playlist i mean we as fans we we love all things that are you how cool is that to to know that you're making an impact on so many different people not only with your music but just with um you know the the amounts of awesome things that you do you know what i'm saying Dude, it's like it's your, your daily life so cool man it's so cool to to have a super dedicated following that like um, hells yeah they just get excited about um you know everything and that that sometimes if i'm having a bad day and i like take a picture of the latte that i have and they're like yo this is so cool it puts me in a good mood so um just connecting with you know that many people is really wild the craziest thing on earth man man. i mean you know it's just like you have the power to to reach that many people why not be a a good person uh you know damn it can we go to bang bang and get that tattooed bro because that's just like it really that's all that it's about trying to get uh, my second tattoo all right yeah we'll we'll get into that this hour you cool with that that don't spill the beans just yet man spencer sutherland's gonna be taking over our iHeartRadio radio nine at nine here on z100 so let's just roll into this and we're gonna get to your playlist in a second all right dog let's do it You, you step foot into the studio you've you become family here, man. Let's think back to the time when uh, you were doing Today Show, Elvis's Artist of the Month. You've been ingrained in the in the brand, dude. Um, what's it mean for you to kind of just hang out here and, and, and rock with Z100 again? Dude, it's so cool to always come here. I remember the first time I came here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you had me in. We low key just you rolled it was down like 10 the street. PM. Yeah, you just kind of came through. I still got the pictures, dude, that we took right here in front oh, of the yeah. wall. <laughs> yeah. I remember I just walked in. I was just like, you know, because this is like the biggest radio station in the country. So like to walk in um, was super cool. And I just remember you're like, yeah, come on up. And I was like, I told Wait, you, bro, it's real? always an open door policy with you, man. And it's all because of what you've. You've done not only as an artist, but just as a dude who's been on this this grind. Thanks, and I've man. respected that since day one, man. Where does the where does the music sit with you now? I mean, our relationship goes back a bit, but how how amazing does it feel now to create these songs? Yeah, man. I, I it, like you just said, like it feels like family here. I just walk in, I just I'm dapping up everybody and like, yeah, it's so good to see you again. <laughs> yeah. uh, but man, it's just been such a journey, and like you've literally, you know, know me since. I didn't have any songs released and I was doing covers and I would send, I would send you demos and yeah. play you demos and you're like, yeah, bro, like this is great. Or this is like, this needs this or whatever. Um, it's been a really special journey and like, you know, it's, it's finally the time where I feel like everything's come together and I have, um, I have my own fan base for the first time yeah. in my life where I can do my own tour. And it's, uh, it's, it's definitely something that I don't take for granted because I've had so many years of not having this. Yeah. Um, and that's why it means so much to me to have everybody, you know, like if, if a hundred people come to a show, it's like, oh my God, a hundred people they are there just for you. That's what I'm saying, man. And yeah. Like, <laughs> and there's more about, than a hundred, by the way. Yeah, dude, let's put that yeah, out there. But I know what sure, you mean. For sure. But yeah. it's just like the, the, the energy is so much more important to me than like numbers, streaming yeah. numbers. Like I, I understand that you like have to have those. Yeah, for sure. But the energy when it's so real, and it's it just dope means when you have so 10 much. million streams. Like that would Hell be yeah. great. I, don't get me wrong. But <laughs> the most important thing to me is the fans and yeah. the connection and the the energy and like that's why we live. We don't live to see I don't live my life to see a hundred million streams. Yeah, on to song. see stats. Yeah, for sure. Um, don't get me wrong, it's great. Yeah. But uh <laughs> I live to like walk on the stage and feel so high from the crowd and just be like this is what living is like this is why i'm here this is what i'm supposed to do i'm supposed to make you know these girls in the front row i want to make them happy because they had something bad happen at home or they're going through something and um all the above it's the best thing ever 
And see, that's why we connect because it is it is so uh, ingrained in what your personality is. Is you're, you're doing it for the right reasons. And we as fans, uh, I'm going to make this segue into playing some of your music. That's that's a thing. We yeah. we love the uh, you know all things Spencer. You know everything from the music you create to uh, the people who you're riding with and who you're rocking with. So that's what this takeover is about, man. Mm-hmm. It's about you playing stuff that you just. You get down to what's on your playlist. What are we gonna drop on the world famous Z one hundred? I think first, uh, and this is being played a lot. Everybody knows this song, but okay, I've really been rocking with Lizzo. Oh, dude, and uh, I mean, every everybody, everybody is. Doesn't matter how old you are, yeah, what gender you are, what race you are. Like everybody's obsessed with Lizzo, and that's what is so sick um, about her. I love, I love the Truth Hurts song so much. And like we'll, I know all the words, we'll do it. yeah. So I think, yeah. We, I think we should play that. <laughs> I'm with it, dude. Oh, and up. by the way, I, I bet you didn't know that you're gonna sing it, right? You know, I'm just playing. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> you know, I well, I'm me it. and Greg because I want to be right. You know, uh, let's do it, man. Lizzo is on <laughs> Spencer's playlist. It's on all of ours, and right now it's on the world famous Z100. Hey, I want to piggyback a little bit ago. We played Lizzo. It's uh, a song that's on your playlist. It's on a lot of ours. You just recently, our sister station in Columbus, Ohio, uh, WNCI, you played to a sold out show with her. What's it like to um, to watch her rock the stage and to come into her own as well from the side, uh, you know, the wings of of what's happening there in the venue? Man, I I saw Lizzo about four years ago at yeah. this like private YouTube event, and I remember seeing her for the first time, being like, I've never seen anything like this. This is special. This is cool. And then I followed her on Instagram. I think she had like seventy thousand followers on Instagram. Yeah. So then, like, fast forward a couple of year, years later, like, last year, she started blowing up, and I'm like, oh, man. This, this is like, something. I knew this was going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> then the next year, she's, like, you know, the biggest artist in the game, and it's like... like I told you so. I was you like, were I kind of feel like, so. yeah, yeah, I told y'all so. What does it mean to you to know that there are other artists and fans of your music thinking and feeling the same way about you? I can't even, like... I don't know. I can't even, like, think about that. It's so crazy. Like, yeah. Like, I... F- it's like really, really hard to put into words exactly, but um but I definitely like need to step back and think about that sometimes because it's like so like that's why we do this, you know. Yep. Yep. Dude, um, I'm telling you, you're creating music and you have done for so long now that uh I find a, a genuine pleasure in in watching your star continue to shine just the same way that you you, you put your stamp on approval on Lizzo years ago, dude. I mean, it's like, it, it, I'm I'm loving the fact that I get to tell people, I told you. You dude. know what I'm saying? I told you so. You're that dude, man. I You're have, that dude. Once in a while, I'll, I'll have like music and people will just be like, yo, Max told me about you a couple years ago. Dude. And like, now we're here. It's so now cool. we're here. And yeah, now we're here. Um, more music from Spitzer Sutherland's personal playlist here on Z100. What are, you, what are you cracking with, man? You said you have several playlists. So what are we getting this time, man? Um, so there's this guy that I co-write all my songs with. Okay. Um. Every one of my songs, he also does some of the harmonies on it and stuff. He's one of my best friends. His name's Sam Fisher. Yeah. And he has a song um, called This City that's actually kind of blown up right now. Oh. Um, Streaming-wise. Yeah, and yeah. I, I, you know, he's one of my best friends, but I still am such a massive fan of this man. And uh, You're putting me on to some stuff, too, you man. You hear it's soulful, dude. It's so good. All right. So which one from Sam Fisher? We're playing, we're uh, playing This City. This City. Do you, do you know that he's going to freak out knowing yeah, that you, I don't know if he's ever like had a radio play before. That, so this is now be you're really, doing really it, cool. dude. Yeah, yeah, now you're, now you are doing it. That's why I love yes. this, uh, being a part of uh, this, this feature on Z100, is mm-hmm. that you are, are giving other artists the same type of chance that other artists have given you. And that's like the dopest thing ever, dog. So uh, here it is. Spencer wants to hear it. We're going to play it. Sam Fisher here on the legendary Z100. It's the world famous Z100. iHeartRadio 9 at 9 countdown with Spencer Sutherland taking over. And um, we talked about this when you were in our Dunkin' Latte Lounge, man. The emphasis on none. Uh, you said it was a, it was a, a typo. Sort of. <laughs> None of this has <laughs> been about you. Uh, the EP. Go ahead, and if anyone hasn't seen that video yet, how did the whole caps uh, of the word none happen for you? <laughs> well, it's funny because like we finally came up with the name of the EP, which was the name one of the songs on the record, and uh, I was I was texting it to a guy at my record label. I was texting him, "None of this has been about you," and for some reason, none capitalized. Yeah. Um, I'm just wondering how many times you've had to type none in all caps. That's what I'm saying. To like, autocorrect. No. Like, I'm a diva, you know? Like, <laughs> how, many, how many waters do you want? None. <laughs> or whatever. That's um, hilarious. <laughs> and it stuck. It, it was it just was, something that stayed weird. there. I sent it, and he's like, oh, you want the none capitalized? And I looked, and I was like, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of dope. It kind of works. 
I remember like texting back and forth with my manager about it. Like, is this like a th- cool? And we're like, yeah, it's cool. Yeah. So we just decided to keep it. Now to uh, to tour some of this new music that I know that you've got in the bank, man. Um, so what, what's much. it? Yeah. What's it like to get out there and to share these stories? It's super cool, man. Uh, you know, this is my first project. Mm-hmm. So instead of just singles, like having these people be able to connect to like all these songs together yeah. um, is sort of like a story. So. It's almost like they're like helping tell my story by like really connecting these lyrics and putting their own stories to it. Yeah. Um, and it's so cool to have this many songs. People know the words. See, like the first four songs of the set, everybody's screaming all the words. Dude. And I've never had that before. And, and I bet that helps too sometimes. I mean, when your voice is a little like, mm, you're like, I can just hold the mic out and they got it from A hundred percent. I'm just trying, to, just trying to say, dude, that when we're in these rooms watching you go all out, you give it your all. And we're there just in case if you need a break, bro. Got your back, homie. Hell yeah. Love that. <laughs> Let's talk more music that. on your personal playlist, man. Uh, Spencer Sutherland, what is it that you want to hear on Z100? I mean, it's all you, bro. Dude, so I'm a huge Five Sauce fan. Oh, who isn't, right? Yeah, literally. Uh, it's so cool because it's been really cool to watch them go from sort of a pop punk band to mm-hmm. like a mature rock band. For sure. Yeah, that's a good observation. Man, for sure. they just nailed it, too. Uh, the new song, Teeth, is oh, wild. Why The video is creepy. Not even gonna I lie. I haven't seen it D- yet. Wait, bro. When you put your, just be prepared, man. I mean, yeah. it's creepy in a good way, in the sense that it's like, it gives you those cringy. It's almost like you're under anesthesia, and you're on this. The dudes are just uber creative with it. Yeah, man. But I the love, song. I love that kind of stuff, and that's that's what I'm rocking with. Right so now, you're so down man. for, uh, you know, this new five sauce teeth on Z100? Yeah, let's play teeth. You're just breaking records on my <laughs> station, man. I'm digging this, dude. Uh, Spencer Sutherland taking over our iHeartRadio nine at nine, and this is the brand new one. From Five Seconds of Summer. Here's Teeth. It's Spencer Sutherland's playlist on our iHeartRadio nine at nine. And um did you ever did you ever get your sweater back? Uh, I did not get my sweater back. No, no, tell us tell us about this particular story. I mean, for those who have heard the record, for those who, who know that you create your lyrics from, you know, life experiences. Totally. Uh, how did this one how did this one come to fruition? I actually just tweeted yesterday I only <laughs> something about like I only write songs about true things. Yep. I'm a I'm I'm all real or something like that. Um man, it's it's funny cuz it's like an embellished story because this certain thing happened when I was in 6th grade. Yeah. And my first my f- first girlfriend um we were dating for like 2 weeks. Of course, cuz that's what you do when you're 6th grade. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's like, like when it lasts 3 weeks you're like, "Oh my god, I we're just kissed married. her on the cheek and yeah. I was like, "Oh my god." <laughs> like kissing her on the cheek was like second base to me. Yes. <laughs> Um, but it was wild. I was like, cause there's only like six or seven dudes like that, yeah, that yeah. had kissed a girl on the cheek. And <laughs> we were like so excited. I remember that, man. I like got on my bike and rode away just like, oh man. Yeah. Well, look what just happened. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was like at that time and, uh, she started acting weird for a couple of days and I was like, I don't understand what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. And then she broke up with me through a friend. She had a friend to come and tell me. That's another thing that always happens in sixth grade. Yeah. Uh, my life was over. You're crushed. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then like another week or two passes and I, you know, I, I'm getting better. I'm fine. And she wears my hoodie to school. Ugh. And I was like, what? Like, you can't do that. That's like <laughs> against the rules. <laughs> so then, the, you know, I kind of wrote a song about that. Fast forward 10, 15 yeah. years later. And the song's called Sweater, and it says, that's my sweater, why the, uh, you got it on. Yeah. We're not yeah. together, you should have left that at home. Dude, and there's a lot of emphasis on those fill-in-the-blanks right there, man. Yeah, You're singing with of... pure passion, man. Watching this song come to life and watching fans, uh, you know, just gravitate towards Dude. this particular song. That, from your perspective, must be the sickest thing ever. It's crazy, man, because, like, we went out on this tour with this uh, with this band in real life. Who yep. are my They're your homies. Great friends. Family. Yep, and it was my like my first like real tour, and we were looking for a filler song for this set. So I'd written sweater like two weeks before, and I was like, uh, yeah, let's just throw this in there. About three four shows in, everybody's singing it. Yeah, first chorus, and I'm like, how? What's up? I stopped a song one show. I think it was in like Indianapolis, and I was like, how do you guys know this? <laughs> I was like, that's wild. And then after the show, everybody's like, yeah, it's like someone retweeted. It's got like you know 600 retweets on Twitter. I'm like, yeah, it's not out. To have even yeah, it's nuts. So I saw a couple about a couple months later, I signed my first record deal, and the label was like, "Hey, we we think this song's a single, not sweater." Yeah. Um, and then they came to a show and saw sweater, and they said, "Hey, yeah. 
we think sweaters are single <laughs> because the fans are never wrong. And yeah. I was like, yeah, I know. You're writing songs and you're creating um, from a perspective where a lot of people, uh, age, uh, gender, um, you know, race, again, the same way, re- reverting back to what you said about yeah. Lizzo, that people can relate to, dude. And this is just a feeling that you've created with this song that we all want to put the emphasis on those words dude. that are fill in the blank because we all feel that same sort of not only connectivity with the lyrics, but with the story that you're telling. Totally. And that's talent, dude. Thanks, man. I, I think like those words are in there because it was what I said in the moment when we were writing it. And it's, yeah. And I was like, oh, we should probably like, you know, not say this. And the producer was like, no, dude, like it's yeah. real. It's how you feel. Got to say how you are authentically as a person. Well, um, I want to give you the opportunity right here, man. Uh, the number one song on tonight's iHeartRadio 9 and 9 from his personal playlist is his own. Spencer, it's time for you to introduce this song on Z100, dude. Go for it. This is Spencer Sutherland, and this is my single sweater. On the on, on yo, this is Spencer Sutherland, Z. and this is my single sweater on Z100. That's what I'm talking about right there, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, a couple of weeks away from, I believe the homie's gonna pop into the studio and do the same thing that you're doing. Shout out to Hoodie Allen. I know you guys got a track Boy. together. Uh, I want to encourage you all to check out Spencer's uh, performance in our Dunkin' Latte Lounge on our YouTube channel right now. But you talked about how this song came together so organically. Um, any pointers that you want to give to Hoodie? You know what I'm saying? When he steps in and does the thing that you're doing, you know what I'm saying? To make sure that he doesn't screw things up? Hoodie is a... I've watched a lot of interviews with Hoodie. He's yeah. hilarious. He's yeah. very like he's very quick. Yep. Um, Sharp dude. And our t- our texts are hilarious. Yeah. Sure, like, and we've just because we just joke around the whole time. Yeah. Um. So I think he'll be fine without my pointers. Okay. And, and this song again. Uh. You know. Real quick. Summing up. I mean, it came together so organically. You said you you DM'd him a while back. You you tweeted him a while back, and he finally got back to yes. you. Yes. Yeah. I've been I've been a fan of Hoodie for years. Yeah. Um. Huge fan of Hoodie, and uh. Basically, like, I had tweeted him, like, a bunch, just about, like, hey, come out to my show. Yeah, it was cracking. Or he literally was cracking, like, all the time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Hoodie's a busy guy and has a lot of followers, so he never really saw it. And he ended up um, hitting me about my music video for Sweater. Yeah. And he actually ended up using the same guys for his music video for one hey, of his singles. Yeah, that's yeah, dope. That he just did, um, which is really cool. I love when that kind of stuff happens. But um, we got in this, he came to my New York show that I was on with Jack and Jack. Mm-hmm. In April or May, and uh, we got in the studio about a month later. Made this song, ate some hummus. <laughs> a couple months later, the song's out, and we're we're stoked. We have it out. It came together so quick, and we're we're super excited about the song, man. I've been performing it on tour, and people have been like singing it already. It's been out for three to four days. Yeah, give it up on us. Here's the thing: uh, he's definitely gonna play it here in the studio, so I'm gonna reserve that honor for him to introduce it when he gets in yes. here. So I don't want to take that away from him. But yes, nonetheless, yes. man, I mean, I've put my ears to it. It's another one. You you do what you do so well, bro. And I just want to say thanks for staying so true to who you are again, man. And of course, I don't man. see that ever wavering, and it's just like the reason why there is always an open door policy here is E100 for you, bro. Serious business, man. Love coming through, dude. Your family, you've been there since day one, and uh, I appreciate you so much. means the world to me. Um, One last question for Spencer Sutherland before we let you out of the Z100 Studios, man. And this is one where, yeah, get a little nervous because I'm just going to ask you to keep it all the way 100 with me, dude. All right? We're here. Legendary Z100, keep it all the way 100. This is their one question that needs the honest answer. Spencer, rank these scary movies. Best to worst. Wait, not wait, yet. Wait, wait, wait. All right, I'm gonna give them to you. Best right. is one. Yeah, best is one. Okay, okay. Yep, yep. Best to worst. Rank these scary movies. Best to worst. Nightmare on Elm Street. Annabelle comes home. Friday the Thirteenth. <laughs> Keep it all the way 100, Spencer Sutherland. I'm gonna put number three. Wait, wait, wait. All so right. we got Nightmare on Elm Street. Annabelle, what else? Annabelle and Friday the Thirteenth. I'm gonna put Friday the Thirteenth number three. Okay. I'm going to put <laughs> Nightmare on Elm Street, number two, and I'm going to put Annabelle Comes Home, number one. <laughs> I think we know why, ladies and gentlemen. And that's how you keep it all the way it's 100 a, in a legendary Z100. It's a good movie. You're a smart man. Shout out, Annabelle. <laughs> there it is. Spencer, again, bro, it's open door policy, man. Love you to Thank pieces, you, dog. And thanks for kicking it. Love that's you, how we man. take over Z100, baby. From the top of the Empire State Building. Z100.